that's on the top of the air hour. And we do have a quorum. I expect Mike may not be here. He's running a temperature of 102, not feeling so hot. So, well, he is feeling very hot, I should say. Uh, so I would not be surprised if he's not here tonight. Uh, so a little bit unusual request came in. This is only the second time I've ever seen one of these kind of things come in. The last time uh, we had a much shorter runway, it was over a weekend. We had to come up with the figures and get them back to Senator Jeffords office for any project. It was all transportation related at that time. It was part of the Federal Transportation Act that they do, I believe it's every five years. And uh, he was on the uh, negotiation team between the Senate and the House. So he had quite a bit of influence and he was looking for some projects in Vermont to put in. And we were successful with Cambridge in putting in for the uh, hogback. Uh, you may recall a few years ago, got completely rebuilt. And that's where the money came from. At that time, I'm not sure about this one, but at that time, um, it was a mil million dollar minimum. Uh, basically, the federal government doesn't mess with anything less than a million dollars. So I believe as it worked, they uh, allocated a million dollars for that project and anything that was not spent on the project was just simply returned to the federal government. I didn't see that kind of restrictions, but I'm guessing that it's probably similar with uh, what well, uh, Congressman Welch has proposed, except for the little bit of difference here is in his role on the appropriations, uh, it's a whole slew of different categories that we could have something that uh, could possibly uh, be uh, qualified. Thank you. So I guess the, uh, the question for us tonight is what, if anything, we would like to throw forward propose and uh, you know maybe just talk about it as the board uh, what, what, what what we'd like to do I, I think it's a great opportunity um, and we sh it's a uh, one of those that we shouldn't let pass if, if we uh, want to throw something into there and there's certainly no guarantee it's only uh, we'd be providing a project to congressman Welch uh, then if it made his list or not would be you know, one question, if we did make his list and it got put in the appropriations bill, well, obviously it's still got to get approved by not only the House, but the Senate and the president's signature as well. So it would still be quite a, a, a road ahead of it. But uh, first part of it is getting something in there to Congressman Welch if there's interest. And uh, I know there's been a little bit of email flurry out there, throwing some ideas out, but that was the main reason I wanted to just pull the group together and just talk out some of those thoughts and see where we might go with it. So with that, Brian, do you have anything more to add on what the proposal is? Not really on background on the proposal. Um, I can kind of share our, I guess our, our kind of our three leading candidates for where we might spend the money and that might help us kick off. Before you propose, can I just ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. About, about the grant itself. So I was just looking at, there's a, a link about what the uh, project survey text is, um, meaning basically what you, what you would need to fill out. And a couple of the questions are questions like um, what the amount would be, a description of the project, obviously, but also what appropriation subcommittee it would belong to. And also um, if you were awarded the money, would you be able to spend it by September 30th of 2022? And it doesn't indicate whether or not it's a requirement that I can see, but the fact that they asked the question just makes me wonder if that should guide the types of projects we're talking about. Definitely should. Yeah, I, I think it should. Uh, if it's not a strict requirement, uh, the, it, the reason that it's in there indicates to me that that's at least a preference even if it's not a hard stop, you must, 
it's got to be part of their consideration. So I saw somewhere. Okay. okay. And then my second. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you've got the floor. I apologize. No, it's okay. I was going to ask a different question. So please. Um, I saw on the page some, I don't, I don't have it highlighted, but also that um, ground transportation projects are excluded from this, um, that that's going to be part of the transportation, that that would probably be part of a transportation bill at some later point. So I'm wondering if anybody's had time to dig in to see really um, if there are other restrictions or what um, what criteria they're looking for, because I haven't had time to dig into that. No, not at this time. Um, I imagine Rebecca is, Rebecca Ellis from uh, Welch's office, who we've had good contact with in the past. I imagine she's flooded with requests right now. Um, but yeah, I've got a couple of questions for her. Like Beth pointed out, there's a couple, there's a couple of questions on that the text of the what we're going to have to supply that I don't know what they're going to I, I don't know everything about it yet so I've got a few questions okay. that I'm going to need some assistance from uh, for her office I reached out to Rebecca first um, but so I, I, I just found it it's right on the, the home page of the community project funding requests page of uh, Peter Welch's uh, website. It says, please note that there will be a separate process for surface transportation projects that are funded by the upcoming surface transportation reauthorization bill. Um, so I would assume that, for instance, the hogback project, if we had something like that at this point, might not be the best candidate based on that sentence. I'd mentioned Railroad Street. Um, in an email, and I don't think Railroad Street probably would be. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Brian, what were the three that you uh, thought would be the, uh, not only the highest priorities maybe for us, but maybe the highest possibility of getting uh, selected? All right, so first in chat, I just went ahead and posted a link to the website that we've been referencing. Um, I'm not going to put it up uh, as a screen share because there's just too many different things that you might want to read at the website. It's not really a good use of screen share. Right. Um, so the, the projects that I, I think are, are good candidates for this are the uh, first round of, it, of infrastructure improvements at the light industrial park. Uh, the second one would be... Um, the, the bridge to connect the skate park and uh, Old Mill Park, like a, a foot and snowmobile bridge. Uh, the third one being a uh, redevelopment of the Old Mill House. I think that the light industrial park with the possible exception of maybe it would have to qualify under the transportation bill. I don't think so because it's infrastructure. But with that exception, I think that's our best bet. It's the furthest along. We have the most engineering and planning done for it. We have accurate pricing guides. Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very likely candidate. Uh, I've spoken to Seth at LCPC and John Mandeville at LEDC and they both think that this is a, a strong candidate for, for submission as well. I would just add that that uh, light industrial park is first of all, shovel ready. We have good numbers. It's not just a conceptual thought or drawing. Um, and maybe equally important, uh, Congressman Welch is aware of this whole project. So yeah. Anybody have any other thoughts? Um, my... Eben? Go for it, Beth. Beth? <laughs> He's yielding to you. 
Um, the I would just expand on the footbridge at Old Mill Park, and I would make it. I would like to see um, electricity at the park personally, and I would also like to see restrooms there too. I think that Johnson over the year, over the decades, um, has really been a really good host of events um, that would bring really good business in. And that would be an excellent site if we had those um, access to electricity on the fields and also um, restroom. Evan? I was gonna make a joke, but I won't. Um... I mean, I, if the light industrial park is the best candidate, I like that. Um, is there any way to, probably not to pull it together in time, but if we had a comprehensive plan for Old Mill Park that included the bridge and reworking the old building, power infrastructure and everything. Uh, I mean, there's gonna be power at the, at the trailhead building, but not necessarily in the park. If we could encompass it as one project, I don't know if it would make a better candidate because um, it would be community as a whole, but I probably don't have enough time to get that together. My concern with, with that one, I think it's a good project, but the, the planning for it is, is a little bit of my concern with that and having uh, accurate numbers for everything we want to do in the, in the park. I think the lights are something that I I really want to get access for the park. Um, I think that'll make a huge difference. Like Beth said, we've had some really good success with hosting events here, and that would really take us to the next level. Um, and a lot of the the communities around us do don't have lighted fields. So yeah, this would be a really great asset. Um, but I, the light industrial park is so close. Um, right, I, I support that first. I guess I was just throwing ideas out there. A, a massive water park would be great too. Yeah. I knew that was coming. <laughs> it had um, to. <laughs> um, so a lot of these uh, things that we're talking about, there is the, um, Railroad Street area-wide plan, which is also known as the Brownfield study, I believe. Um, there is a, thanks to Leah, uh, a 2005 recreation resources map, recreation facilities pl plan map, um, a 2007 report on potential uses for talc mill property. Um, all of these plans is a treasure trove of plans on our website under townofjohnson.com slash documents slash plans. So a lot of these things that we're talking about, there are sort of some conceptual first go plans, but nothing to the extent that we have under, <laughs> nothing to the extent that we have uh, developed for the uh, uh, in light industrial park. But there's some really cool things there that should not be forgotten about. Yeah. I guess there's also likely to be some amount of uh, money available to towns that we can assign ourselves. Um, details about how that, what uses are eligible for that are still coming out. I see a couple members of our CUD representation on, and I know that they have some uh, plans for that pot of money, but uh, yeah, th there are going to be some additional funds. So just because it's not the project we submit for this doesn't mean it's entirely off the table. Beth? Yeah. Our, um, if we're just throwing ideas out, I had some other things too, I just wanted to throw out there. Um, there's the talk of the sewer expansion is one item. There is the, um, since the CUD representation is good here, there is um, of course internet expansion and kickstarting that in Johnson, um, which I think benefits everybody in a big way um, or could anyway. I also am curious about energy efficiency projects. 
Are there any um, you know, long-term plans for energy efficiencies across the town um, and perhaps even the village, I'm not sure. Um, but I could imagine there could be big things we could do there. Um, and then there's the um, business recruitment, like putting money into marketing and advertising and trying to recruit businesses to come to Johnson who are not just small businesses, but maybe medium-sized businesses in um, ways of approaching that. Um, and then there's the library building with flood mitigation for library, the building itself. We often talk about flood issues in the library or hear about them um, in my prior to be on the board, being on the board. Um, and it just seems that, you know, maybe there are some funds that we should put into lifting the building higher so it is less likely to be damaged. I don't know. I'm just, you know, spitballing here. So take all of what I'm saying for what it's worth. It's a spitball. Um, and then the cold storage, we had some discussions around the cold storage too. So not only the Millhouse building, but also the cold storage building and the possibilities there. Um, so. And that's exactly what we, the intent was tonight was do a little spitballing and uh, maybe if we can, can come to one place and we'll have something go forward with. Um, I do at some point want to open it up to the public and hear any comments anybody has out there as well. And if there is no further board member thought, Beth? Uh, yeah, just one more thing. Um, one of the questions on that survey was how many submissions are you making? Which implies we can and maybe should um, apply for multiple projects. Good point. Okay, um, Brian, why don't you go ahead and open it up to any public comment. I see Casey jump, get her hand up. Yep, I see Casey first. Uh, Casey, you've got to unmute still. We were, never not... that, we were never that successful with muting her husband. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, we should talk about process too. Uh, one process question that comes to mind is sort of a, mm, well, it's just a process question, is <clears throat> uh, get a group together for informal discussion and you guys and uh, try to figure out what will the federal grant cover but what could some of the ideas we've heard tonight be covered by other grants? Uh, for, the, for instance, the bridge, the, the idea of a bridge from the mill park to connect the skate park, much as I love it, um, could garner other, you know, could be covered by other grants perhaps if we showed investment in the mill park uh, in infrastructure. I mean, I'd, I'd cut off many appendages to have a bridge, <laughs> as, as everybody knows, but um, it just leads to the question of process, of how to, how to assign weight and priority to ideas. That's it. Thank you, Casey. All right, uh, I've got Greg up next and then Scott, I see your hand, I'll, I'll get to you after Greg. I got a couple of questions. So how much, how much is money? Is it, how much can we apply for? Well, does anybody know that? If it's uh, like the prior one that we were, uh, we were fortunate to get, it was min a million dollar minimum project mm -hmm. in that really? scope. And then when's the deadline? Uh, March 31st, I believe. Yeah, March 31st. So that's like, what, what's that, 10 days away? So yeah. Like 12 yeah. Days? Very, very so short that, runway. That's going to pretty much, and you got to fill out the grant too, which is it, is it difficult, Brian, or is it a one, one pager? It's got a few unusual sections on it. 
Um, like I said, I'm going to try and reach out to Welch's office and get a little bit of assistance. Um, I don't, I, this is not the longest one I've seen. I think this is, you know, relatively short, but un, a little unusual. So. Okay. Do we have the capacity to get that filled out in time? Yeah. Okay. And you say it's no transportation, uh, not, uh, what exactly does that mean? Does it mean sidewalks or are you talking roads or power or what, what does that, does anybody know what that means? I can just quote you what, what it says. Um, and it, it, again, go to, uh, go to that link that Brian shared about halfway yeah. down the page. It says, please note that there will be a separate process for surface transportation projects that are funded by the upcoming surface transportation reauthorization bill. Surface transportation, huh? I wonder what that means. And I guess we'll have to try to figure it out. That but, was where we got the money uh, at that number of years ago for the hogback was from that authorization on transportation. Sur surface transportation? Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about this. I wonder if the, the industrial park would be an investment in our town that might keep giving back over time. Um, because if we get more business in there, we increase our tax basis and uh, bring more people and jobs to town. So um, I guess I would be in favor of that uh, project as much as anything, because I like to see us invest uh, that kind of money like a business would you know you look for a return so the other stuff's great great ideas and could produce a return too for sure but uh, I think this is immediate and you've got a lot of work done already so I think your your chances of getting the grant would be better because you you've already got a good solid plan and you've only got 12 days to to figure this out so I guess that's my opinion Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, Greg. Uh, you have a follow-up to Greg, Beth? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I was just looking at what the what surface tra transportation is, and there's a government um, board that is um, basically has jurisdiction over railroad rates, practices, service issues. It's, it looks like it's tied to the railroad specifically, um, and freight movement, but you don't think so, Nat? I don't think so. Okay. I, I think know. that it can include roads. Um, my belief on our application for this and why I think this will qualify is that because we're also running other utilities, I think that we can call the whole project an infrastructure project and not a transportation project even though it has a transportation component, but it does have a transportation component. So they might say that it's not eligible for this program. And that's something we can clarify with the uh, Congressman yeah. Welch's office. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm, I wanna seek some additional guidance on. So I think we got Scott up next. I saw Charlie put his hand up and Doug also has his hand up. Yep. So Scott, go ahead. Alrighty. Um, hey, everybody, and welcome back, Eric. Thank you, Scott. So I was on the phone with Meredith um, today, and this sort of caught us by surprise. We weren't um, given a heads up, which is a little weird because I thought we were working in the same avenue. Um, but anyway. I just wanted to add that please don't forget about the village. We also have stuff that impacts the town as well and all our residents. So with that, uh, the Talk Mill um, Park, all the town and village own businesses or businesses, um, buildings. And I've heard um, the old Talk Mill house and I've heard cold storage. I haven't heard anything on the village garage. Um, which is falling apart in need of major restoration, probably around $250,000 worth. Mm. Um, 
and the blighted building, um, the old mill itself, which is sort of an ice or, you know, we have a rail trail that hopefully will be connected up fairly shortly with the rest of the state. So if we're looking to spend some cash, I would love to see um, a total restoration of that area and like get rid of the steel building, put up something that's not so horrific looking, um, put some money back into those buildings and get them up to shape. And again, I know there's, there's a push to revitalize that area for businesses as well but you know we're also trying to push our industrial park and we're having a hard enough time just getting that used and i think the only use that sees right now is atv use it would be nice if we could do both and you know we'd be well over a million dollars for sure if we you know provided some kind of push on the industrial park and either use it or get rid of it. And for uh, the talc mill, talc mill um, jointly owned town and village properties for the garages that, you know, we do something with that because they're falling apart. And maybe if we clean that land up a little bit, we can lease some other parcels out to interested businesses. There's already power and water there and sore, it's ready to go. Um, and it's a brownfield, so it could be key for um, redevelopment and future funding. I, I wish we had more time to really constructively have a conversation on this rather than just you know a short period of time. Um, it's unfortunate, I, I, but I guess that's the way it goes. So those are my comments and thank you for putting this together. Thank you, Scott. And yeah. I do apologize uh, when that note came in, uh, my first thought was just to get it out to the select board and I didn't even uh, think of, you know, sharing it wider to the trustees as well and not knowing that you didn't get it from some source. Yeah, no, we, we the notice, we only received the notice a couple hours before the meeting was, this meeting was noticed. Um, yeah, there's there was not much runway uh, lead up time to this at all. And uh, I mean, a lot of the folks here are raising some really great ideas and things to think about. And it's very unfortunate that uh, we're not far enough along in the process to be real competitive, having some good numbers and good things on the ground planning wise. But uh, that's the purpose of tonight is to try to throw a bunch of things out and see what might stick. And that's what we hopefully can go forward with and maybe get selected. Okay, Brian, who was next? I've got Charlie, then Doug. Okay. And uh, Athena as well. Yeah. Am I live? Yeah, yep, we can hear you. Okay, first of all, surface transportation is whatever Congress says it is, but typically it's highways, bridges, tunnels, um, public transit on those uh, surfaces, but typically, and, and railroads, as Beth pointed out, uh, it probably does not include waterways and air travel, air transport. Um, so it's, it's pretty all encompassing. And I would think that your bridge that you talked about would be included in surface transportation, as would work at Scribner Bridge, which also needs to be investigated. As a taxpayer, I'm most concerned with old or with the light industrial boondoggle. If you can get a million bucks plus to finish that off, there's nothing more important to this town fiscally than taking care of that. And as uh, I think Scott said earlier, fix it or sell it. That's all I got. Thank you, Charlie. And Doug. Thank you. Um, I'm not having been privy to the original communication. I'm trying to understand which pot of money or this is. And is this uh, related to the uh, funds that are available under the American Rescue Plan? As I understand it, no. This is something out of the, they're, 
the Congress is currently building their appropriations bill, similar to the way the state does. And uh, the Congress members have been authorized to throw in some projects of their own. I, I guess you'd call it pork, uh, but pork tastes pretty good when it's on our plate. And that's where this is, it's a little bit different than normal. Okay, so in, in the um, American Rescue Plan, it looks like there, I just want to add context to this. In, in this plan, it looks like there's a potential of $130 billion to local governments that's going to, and you, you folks are aware of that, I presume. I'm aware there's money coming into the state. Uh, as I just read recently read, it, this, the federal government is allocating it to county governments, but where Vermont doesn't have a county government per se, uh, it's going to go to the state, and then the state is somehow going to divvy it up between the communities. So I'm not sure what we'll end up with. The, the law review article I read said there's 220 billion to the states in this and 130 billion to local governments um, yeah. and then separate categories. So uh, in th those, those items in, in, include uh, infrastructure. And the reason I was here tonight, uh, although serendipitously it'll be on this, this other opportunity was that uh, broadband is one of the uh, uh, categories for for that 130 billion, the slice, uh, and for us in terms of us being the CUD, in terms of that, it it's really early. I guess this really, you know, we're, we're still building the organization, and uh, and the and the loss of Leah, our strategic thinker, is is, is a huge is a huge loss. Uh, but uh, with regard to th this, just illustrates the advantage uh, of having shovel-ready projects like our Main Street plan was when. And uh, I would point out that when you're looking at the brownfields, uh, Leia working on the brownfields, there was a lack of interest on on portions of our community here, and we really ought to reignite that and see uh, work forward towards trying to get funds because. Brownfields, uh, you're highly unlikely to get grants to deal with structures and buildings and things like that, or, or, or funds, unless you have some sort of a, it's a whole process, the brownfield plan. I would think that uh, you, you might want to think about, uh, you know, certainly I think the shovel-ready uh, Jewett uh, property and, and our light industrial park is, 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 is the one thing that is, is shovel-ready. Uh, I would like you to consider if you're thinking about the uh, old mill park, I'd like you to think about an infrastructure improvements. I'd like you to think about buying the Holmes Meadow from Black Ridge Construction LLC and seeing if that would be available. As it, it, it's the land that's there, it's directly connected to that property and it would be a wonderful expansion of, of that area. Now with regard to, uh, in, Howard has been working on this with regard to the Ted Alexander Welcome Center. One of the projects, and, and Scott is going to be voting on this, uh, is one of the projects is to bring electricity there. We have asked the, 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 the ad hoc committee uh, has, uh, has asked the, uh, we had a, a, an estimated cost for bringing electricity there. And the goal of bringing the electricity there was not only to get it to the trailhead, but to get it there so it would be available to light, to provide lighting, to provide a source. So that is on the trustees agenda for, for next week, um, next Monday. We're asking, we're asking them if they would contribute for that. And there is a, the, the plan that we had, uh, well, the goal, however we do it, it should be brought in so it can provide the, be the camel's nose under the tent for purposes of bringing bringing electricity and making it available for field lighting. Uh, and Howard maybe can, can, can speak to that. Um, I, uh, I suspect that the, I suspect that uh, probably Casey can keep some of her appendages because we probably should be planning for a bridge, thinking about floodplain, thinking about uh, how you get that kind of stuff ready. Um, and that's, that's what I have at the moment. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. All right, I've got Athena up next. 
great. Hi. Um, I am just going to sort of back up Scott here and say that um, it'd be really great if the trustees um, had been made aware, uh, especially and, and Meredith as well, because she is absolutely full of great ideas. Um, and then also to back him up on the village garage, because that really is in tough shape and needs a lot of work and directly affects um, quite a number of our employees. And I think that's really important. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Kyle next. Thank you. Hi. Um, yeah, so in some ways, this is a, a, a good problem to have so many ideas and a potential pot of money. I would um, advocate for the idea of, of potentially moving the garages. I, th I think this might be a, a, them being in such rough shape might be a, a blessing in disguise, so to speak, that maybe this is the impetus to move the garages out of that prime uh, spot by the rail trail. Maybe, and I don't, I'm simplifying, but maybe it would be possible to move them to the industrial park as one of um, uh, new business, quote unquote, that moves up there. And then, um, and then putting the area wide plan into, you know, into motion on uh, the talc mill, old mill park area. Um, we've got two plans, one for the industrial park and one ready and one for the, um, that area. So I wonder if, if we can't uh, sort of pitch both those ideas for this grant. Um, and that would, that would help so many things, um, economic development would help, uh, you know, get the town garages, um, uh, moved in and new and good for the employees and, um, and for our, you know, for recreation as well. That's, that's my idea. Thanks. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. If, if I can just butt in here. Yeah, um, go ahead. I think Kyle's on to something there. If we can um, perhaps connect the two different projects that we're talking about, um, Old Mill Park and the Jewett property, there is a relationship there. Um, anyway, Eric said, think big. And uh, I think that's, uh, Kyle might be on to something there. Okay. Uh, who's next, Brian? Okay, next I've got uh, Joy. Hey there. Um, this is not big, um, but I will just kind of put in a plug for um, Johnson Works. We've been talking about getting electricity to the Village Green and getting some better heavy duty kind of Christmas decorations. Again, not probably this isn't the right project for that, but anytime that we bring up um, some funds being available. I just want to keep that kind of at the top of everybody's <laughs> list because the Jubilee and all of that is important. Um, again, if it's a, a situation where we get a certain amount of money to do things, I just want that to be kind of on the list if it gets to be. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy. And don't forget Howard down there waving yep. either. Howard, I see you. I will call on you. I've got Casey and Charlotte up first. So uh, Casey, you're up next. Okay, actually, uh, Joyce, uh, what you just said, Joy, plays into what I was going to say. Um, I The only experience I have with federal pork is an earmark grant that we got a long time ago that, that I wrote for the skate park. It came, the opportunity came through Vermont Parks and Rec Association. And what our concept was, and I th think this was a strong part in why we got the grant, is that um, we brought in both Laraway and Johnson Elementary as partners, essentially, in how the, the, you know, the recreation opportunities would be used. And it wasn't just the skate, you know, the skate park was the lead, but we brought in partners. 
And that uh, is, you know, that also works towards marketing and it works towards multi-use and so forth. Um, so, you know, Greg Tatro will tell you about the importance of involving business in anything we do. We were talking about that some in the uh, Working Communities Challenge grant meeting that we had today that Brian was at. Um, and so if we include the voices and opinions of the business community, um, that will add strength to an application. Uh, if we, the, you know, and the more officially it can be done, kind of the better. Um, you know, we can show here, here we have, you know, through Greg and Jenna's promise, we have this really fantastic uh, example of a project that is linked to business, linked to business growth. We can show some really interesting synchronicity here. That's it. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. All right, and Charlotte. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit um, in support of broadband and the CUD, um, in part because I know that that's an issue that's very close to Congressman Welch's heart. Um, I think a lot of us got to speak with him a little over a year ago, right in Johnson about this issue. Um, we've come a long way since then with uh, the CUD forming and with state and federal governments kind of waking up the fact that rural broadband is a important thing. Um, I think over the last year, we've all really seen just how important it is for, uh, for education, for telehealth, for, uh, for select board meetings and so on. Um, uh, internet service providers have been bypassing rural areas for years because they just do not see it as profitable. Um, that is not the CUD's mission is not about profit. It's about uh, providing high speed, reliable internet access to every address in our member towns. Um, and while we're still developing our business plan right now, um, the one thing that's clear is that this is going to be a multi-year effort to roll out our network and how long that takes is going to be determined a lot by what kind of financing we have. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, and the difference will be in years, not months. Um, so just wanted to throw that out. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. All right, Howard. Okay. Hi. Uh, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, um, the um, about getting lighting down at the uh, ball fields. Uh, there, I was told um, by our um, landscape architect, uh, Kate Lally, who has been working with me at the uh, rail trail, uh, that um, the nearest place for um, after dark um, ball games and such like that is um, is apparently um, Montpelier. <laughs> so we are we are the lone voice. I mean, if we can pull that off here, it will be gigantic in terms of what all the other towns come to use. They really like they really like playing um, with with a big soccer thing that we we host. Um, that's very popular here, um, and um, you know we've got everything we need. Uh, <clears throat> there <clears throat> there will be a full time <clears throat> party. <clears throat> uh, um, single stall portlet uh, from now on um, uh, around once once the new trail hail, trailhead is built um, year round so that's that's something to look forward to um, um, it won't be a you know you, you can't wash your hands in it but in the winter time anyway but that's that's the way that goes what else is going oh on the bridge uh, a number of years ago we commissioned a study done by Vermont Tech um, to design, have, have a professor uh, lead several students into a um, design project for um, a suspension bridge across the Lamoille um, between the skate park and the uh, ball fields. And um, alas, that while, while they actually did it, and we have several examples of what they were thinking, the professor kept insisting that they double the safety factor here and then double it again and then double it again and so consequently, um, the uh, suspension system on that and the, uh, the, the dead load system on each end was certainly as big as the George Washington Bridge or if not bigger, um, <laughs> which made the whole thing 
uh, worth, I don't know, it was something like $6 million and that was 10 years ago. So uh, I, we were really from square one when, where that's concerned. I would love to see us do, to get a, an engineering firm that doesn't, uh, that doesn't try and um, uh, overemphasize the, uh, the ridiculous safety factors that schools typically throw at projects like that um, and rather work with real world, real world issues. Um, yeah, so I guess that's all I've got. There, was there another question somebody had for me? I don't remember. Nah, I don't know. That's enough. Uh, Doug, yeah, what? <laughs> Could you unmute? Can you unmute yourself, Doug? There. Yeah, maybe you can speak to the electrical, the status. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, uh, I, I went out to the uh, rail trail. This, so we've had, we've had uh, estimates for the for electricity brought to the trailhead by both Steve Town and uh, Troy Dolan. And, um, and they're, they're both very different, uh, but they're both within sort of a shout of each other, um, four to five grand, four to six grand uh, to get that done. And it, no matter what happens, they will be sized sufficiently to be able to handle an extension that will be sufficient to light the fields with high density LEDs. So I, I, you know, I think once, once the trailhead, um, that allegedly is in our budget, by the way, to build the rail trailhead. Um, I hope the hell it is. We'll see. Um, yeah, so I, so I think we're going to be in good shape in a, another couple of months on that one. But uh, we need to, yeah, Doug, what? I was going to say we have a financial pledge commitment for that project. We do. We have a financial pledge commitment for that project. Well said, lawyer speak. Did you hear that? That was good. Um, anyway, uh, we're uh, yeah. So that so I, I think we're in, in pretty good shape as far as the rail trail proper is concerned, and that gets us to the edge of the uh, the lower field anyway, um, in terms of having a, a two hundred amp service, which ought to be able to light the light the uh, light the hell out of that field. Thank you, Howard. Yeah. Oh, Doug's still at it. Oh. It's a shift in subject, so that. What? There's a shift in subject. I've, I've got Greg Tatro up with a question. So if we're shifting, I think I'll, I'll call Greg and then get back to you, Doug. Please. Okay. All right, Greg. So I noticed Beth had said that we can apply for more than one project. So I'm wondering if we shouldn't pick some projects in different price ranges, like maybe one from zero to 500,000, one from 500 to a million and, and one for over a million. Or uh, if it's a minimum of a million, which I think I heard Eric say, then we should try to get in those price ranges and then another price range. Um, I think Kyle's idea of moving the garages over there would be pretty expensive. Uh, we looked at it. Well, it's going to cost you 200 bucks a square foot to build nowadays. So, you know, if you need 400, uh, 4,000 square feet, that's times 200. So it's a lot of money. Not, it's a good idea, but it's, and if the money's available, great. Um, but I wonder if we could turn around all the engineering and get that going by March 31st would be quite a trick. Uh, so I don't know, maybe price ranges would be one thing to think about here. And Eric, you said it had to be over a million. I am not sure of that. Uh, I just knew that when we went for the prior one a number of years ago, it was a 1 million minimum is what the federal government would even uh, write into a bill because they don't mess with numbers less than a million. Yeah. Well, moving their uh, garages, you'd probably be four or five million. So if you want to think big, I think that is a good, good big idea. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm thinking of the price range thing. So we could maybe, maybe we could, uh, you know, have two or three different things to at least talk about or submit, I guess, would be, uh, be something to think about. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Greg. Right. And Doug, you had a question. Yeah, or a comment, I guess. The um, looking at the light industrial park being as 
perhaps the lead thing. I, I think that, in, in the village involvement, um, one of the things that the village is responsible for and the village needs and the community needs is that we, we should have a sidewalk that proceeds out towards Jolly that goes to the light industrial park. You have all sorts of skateboarders going there. You have all the people from the trailer park. This is not this, but it's a good surface. You know, presumably it's not this. If it is, it would be good. Uh, and uh, otherwise it might be something to keep in mind for, for surface transportation board. You know, I think that ought to be on the agenda. You do. And the first step on that is planning it. Where would you be? How would you deal? I've seen walkways over water in Canada. You know, would you take ledge out? The first step is shovel ready. Thank you, Doug. And Casey. Uh, you've got to unmute, Casey. Yay. Okay. Um, right. Speaking of bridges, here is a broadband bridge. Uh, what if part of our proposal included um, basically using that expensive satellite service that is being beta tested um, as a temp, you know, strike some sort of deal, town, townwide, whatever, and um, bring broadband or bring, you know, high speed internet quickly to the whole town. Uh, that would be a factor in uh, all the things that it would be good for our current citizens, but it also helps draw business to the new industrial park. So basically a bridge until, until the communication, see, still the CUD stuff is all ready and ready to go. Something immediate. Thank you. So Casey, you're, you're suggesting something like a, a subsidy for folks to sign up for it if they're not eligible for broadband? E yes. Uh, if they don't have the people that don't have broadband or who have insufficient broadband, um, not to do it individually, although you could, but the town brokers a deal with the provider uh, to bring it to the town or the area or something, but the town. And because you're going to be able to then to attract people who will live here and work there at the industrial park, et cetera. A, an, a, an immediate solution, although not a forever solution necessarily. All right, thank you, Casey. Thank you. Casey. And Shane. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Um, I just wanted to agree with a lot of the ideas that people have brought forward. I especially like uh, the concept of mixing multiple projects together, uh, you know, killing two birds with one stone, as it were, um, really focusing hard on the recreational uh, aspect of that old mill park and building that up because we know there's going to be investment from, uh, you know, on the uh, rail trail coming very soon. Um, and the other thing that I would suggest is that in uh, writing this grant, emphasize that Johnson is an opportunity zone and that this type of investment from the federal government could spur additional investment from private actors here. So that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. And I also believe on the opportunity zone that that's a really good point. I believe the guidance still stands that uh, opportunity zones are supposed to receive some uh, preferential consideration uh, for federal grants. So it doesn't give us any great access to them, but uh, it does give us a little leg up. Okay. Right. I'm not seeing any other public comments. Nope, uh, Paul. Good, Paul. He's muted still. You'll have to unmute, Paul. How about now? We That's can good. hear you. Okay, good. Okay, sorry for dialing in late. Um, it sounds like the broadband issue has already been brought up. So, but uh, since I didn't hear it, I wanted to add my two cents. Um, I think we could use some of this money wisely, um, perhaps as uh, Casey suggested already, but more directly um, for the fiber and CUD, 
I think it could be uh, support for the CUD while we get grants lined up and partnerships formed with ISPs, but it could also be used for uh, actual infrastructure, hanging, you know, make ready work on the poles, hanging dark fiber, which then the town could lease to ISPs. So I think there's a number of ways that some of this money could be used very effectively to help speed the, the pace of all that along. So I don't know to what detail that's already been covered. So I apologize if I'm being redundant, but I uh, just wanted to throw that out. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Uh, we're coming up on the top of the hour. I guess I'd like to regroup now with the select board. Uh, you've certainly heard quite a few different proposals come out. Um, it's a, I know it's a huge ask. You're given a one hour and say, okay, how do you want to spend X million dollars, whatever. Do we need to have a motion on this or is this? We should eventually have some kind of action of the board directing yeah. Brian to uh, follow up on. Uh, some of it may be follow up with Rebecca on, is this eligible, is this not? How much information, you know, how competitive are we with this proposal versus that? And this one being shovel ready, this one a conceptual, you know, those kind of questions may be something that we need to have Brian look into, but we should provide some direction for him. Yeah. Um, if I can try and summarize kind of what I've heard, would that help the board? Yes, please. So uh, it sounds like we've got one proposal uh, that would be just going forward with the light industrial park. Uh, as we've already like just applying for the money to carry out the plan we've already got. Uh, it sounds like another project we're interested in is uh, development at Old Mill Park, uh, the park itself, some, some recreation focused around the bridge, around lighting, um, but that's going to take a little bit more work on exactly what does that look like how, uh, you know how much is it going to cost and, and yeah that one that one takes a little bit more work and the third one that i heard a few times is uh development and uh repairs made around our uh existing garages and buildings at Old Mill Park, both the town and the village. Another one we've heard a lot about is the CUD internet, you know, access. I think all of these all these things you've just listed are huge money, you know, the big picture, big, going big. So I think they're in the realm of what we should be looking at. Yeah, I did leave off some of our, our smallest requests. Uh, like Joey, as much as I, I agree with you about the Village Green and, and uh, the importance of, of the Jubilee, um, I don't think this is a great fit for some of our, our smaller projects. Um, I think that I want to aim at a couple of these bigger ones. And I think that as we dig into Old Mill Park, we might be able to cut this up into a couple pieces so that depending on how they're willing to work with us, we might do, you know, we might make that plan into parts A, B, and C. If we get so much money, we do all three. If we get less, we do parts A and part C or some combination thereof, depending on what the grant total is. Uh, but that's going to need some intense work over the next uh, well, week. And Being, um, oh, go ahead, Evan. 
being the large time constraint, uh, it's pretty clear to me that the light industrial park is the smart choice. Uh, do you know about how long it would take? And again, it's just a big numbers thing. And it's difficult because I don't want to put the cart ahead of the horse. Uh, but would I don't think it would be hard to get a core and shell quote where the town could own a building and put it up in the industrial park, uh, just like 10,000 square feet, 15,000 square feet, something like that, uh, which is commonly done in other towns, maybe not by the town. But basically, you just put the shell up. The negative part with that is the town owns it. The town needs to maintain it if we can't get somebody in there. But it's a lot more, uh, it's a sweeter apple for people that are looking to get into an industrial park if a building's already there and they only need to do the internal fit up. So the um, original the plan could. Oh, sorry, Evan, go ahead. What? Uh, no, okay. The original plan that we've got for the um, for that industrial park, the original engineering study did include the road up, the subdivisions, and building five buildings. Uh, we have updated the numbers for the project on just building the road and running utilities. So I could reach out and I have a very roughly designed building and it wouldn't, I don't think it would take too much to ask, you know, what would, based on this design from, you know, a few years ago, what would it cost to update a building of a similar scale? It'd be a risk. Yeah. Because we could, if we could get the money, uh, be crazy not to get it, but we'd also own maintenance of that building uh, with no income off it until it's filled. It's just a lot better chance that it could get filled. Um, and Evan, some of the way it was designed, the whole park layout is uh, there was a lot of flexibility with it. And one reason why you might not want to think about building a building is depending on who the tenant was or who the future purchaser of it was, is they could purchase one, two or more lots and configure them in their own, however their needs are. And so there was a, going to be built in a lot of flexibility on not necessarily having all of the, and I don't remember how many lots we had drawn out that it potentially could be, but, uh, they would have flexibility of redoing it, basically, the way it looked, depending on whatever their needs are. If we got a, you know, a, a huge Amazon going to come in and put a huge warehouse there, they could take the whole thing and just build it out like they would need it. Uh, versus if we have a whole bunch of uh, mini breweries uh, that we have to go check out their liquor licenses, uh, they might have a different build out and need but that's the way we sort of tried to build it was uh or design it so they would have flexibility but it's a good thought because it and that's what we're looking for so brian everything that you you had about four items i believe right uh, yeah i've got four items the light industrial park is the only one that's really ready to go the others are all going to take some uh, time investment. Right. So we have one that's shovel ready. We have three more that uh, would need a lot of, they're not shovel ready. And that's sort of a question maybe for Rebecca, you know, are they competitive or is it even worth putting them in or not? Uh, the other question would be uh, any of those development of the mill site uh, park not the ball field, but the park, uh, the Tatra property is, it would need village buy-in as well. Um, so if we need to have a joint meeting with the village trustees to get their buy-in on going forward with this, that would have to happen right off. I know we have two members on tonight. I'm not sure what their thoughts were on how receptive the village trustee board would be if we included you know, one, one of the thoughts of the redeveloping the mill house and that whole site. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think realistically, I think I can, uh, the industrial park is good. I think in a, for a week's turnaround, I'm hesitant to commit to more than one other project that I'm going to build up uh, in the time allotted. Um, you know, I, I think that building up, I think that trying to commit to more than one new project to develop in a week is, uh, yeah, not going to end well. Thinking about Evan's suggestion that we, um, how did you how did you describe it, putting a shell building in there? How did you describe that? It's called a corn shell. It's pretty common in Chittenden County. Um, you know, somebody uh, it could be the developer, landowner, or whatever. They'll build the shell. Yeah. The electric service. Um, they'll put the air handler in and the boiler. There'll be no walls inside. Yeah. Um, so what I like about that idea is that it could serve as town and or village garage, um, which would give us more flexibility to get out of that um, talc mill location and start redeveloping that brownfield into sort of the sort of that recreational center that uh, we've been envisioning. I, I kind of like that idea. I don't really want to commit to it being that though right now. I just want there to be a shell. Yes. Well, it gives us the flexibility should we decide to go in that direction. It, it gives us, you know, it, it makes it easier for us to do that. Am I mistaken in that? If there's a building there and we decide to do it in the future, yeah. Um, but I wouldn't do it with the purpose right now of that. Um, and given the layout, we could do it um, in the farthest lot or the one on the near corner so that if we were lucky to get Amazon, um, they could buy out the other four lots or whatever. Um, Let me ask it is a risk for the town though because we will own maintenance of that building. Right. Understand. Let me ask you, Brian, do you think that's something you could pull in with an update? Oh yeah, I, I don't think that that's, I should be clear when I say uh, that I can do one, I can do one in addition to the light industrial park and the that update to the light industrial park is not gonna be difficult to do. Uh, I, I think that would be, Fine. Well, I think uh, you know to Eben and and Nat's point that would give us a lot of flexibility, whether it is a town and village garage type of move or whether it's a future uh, tenant that wants to you know buy it. Uh, and using the concept that Eben's describing, they can build it within the walls the way they want it. Uh, so there is flexibility. So I guess that, that could be a real worthwhile addition to think about. Okay. Yes. Um, do you have any comments, Beth, or? About the industrial park? No, I'm all for proceeding with the industrial park. I have a comment on something else. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing the industrial park does for us is you know, hopefully we get quite a few businesses move in there. This was the whole reason for going forward with it. And uh, that increases our grand list, which helps on the taxes, as well as uh, the village had expressed uh, they are, they're not at capacity or anywhere near capacity. They have a lot of room in their sewer plant and they're looking for new additional customers. This would be, uh, a, you know, an money maker for the village as well just having those extra customers so it's a sort of a win-win if we can give get that property developed for the for the broadband discussion i just i i would be reluctant to go in that direction only because um there's a boatload of money in the uh american rescue 
plan bill that just passed for broadband. So I think that they're probably not looking for broadband projects for this particular channel of money. I, I agree, Ned. I, I think that they're, I, I think that broadband is not off the table, but I don't think that this is the best uh, use for this one. You know, we're kind of reading tea leaves, like we don't have any great insight into this, but my feeling is that this is not the best avenue for broadband development. Right. I just want to acknowledge the people that have been been uh, talking about it because we do know it's important and we it is definitely something we, we don't want to ignore it, but yeah. um, it, I think that this isn't uh, what they're looking for out of this money. It's a guess. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Ed. I was just going to make a motion, but if there's more discussion, that's fine. Yeah, I would like to, to ask something. Go ahead, Beth. Um, I'm just curious. There's a number of people who have spoken about Old Mill Park, and there's a number of people who not only have spoken about it, but have put a lot of time and energy into all that it could be. Um, and I'm just curious, and by the way, I, my questioning, I fully support the industrial park being our number one initiative, um, by the way, so before, so just so everyone doesn't get the wrong idea, but I'm just curious if some of the work you're referring to, Brian, um, could be done by somebody else who already has a very vested interest in the old mill park development, and maybe they have some other numbers, some other committees have numbers, or old committees that um, could have some documents out there. I don't know what the possibilities are, but I'm just wondering if, wondering if it could be delegated. And if, you know, push come to shove, it's not something we could submit, we don't, um, but at least we ask the question and try to get multiple things out there. I think that's a great suggestion, Beth. Uh, and yeah, yeah I, I think that if, with some assistance, um, you know, I see Lisa Cruz is on, so we might be making a new project for, for Lisa. But yeah, I, I think that with some assistance, uh, especially for the, the recreation side of Old Mill Park, kind of pulling out the plans we've already got, seeing what needs to be updated and making those updates, I think that's a, I think it's very doable. I And if I can get some assistance with it, I can have somebody like Lisa do that part, and then that frees me up to do the uh, develop, I've got it marked as development and repairs of the existing Mill Park buildings. Um, and I was suggesting actually not only Lisa, so yes, maybe Lisa, but maybe also it sounds like Howard has lots of experience or Doug has lots of experience. Like, you know, would they be willing to help out in what they already know? Yeah, I think I can speak for Howard and Doug, and, and they've been very <laughs> a number of projects. Yeah, I, I think we can draw on a lot of support for that. So it, it won't be, you know, uh, Lisa in the weeds on her own. We'll, we'll get we'll we'll get some help for that one, and I think that'll let us submit the three. Um, I am going to attend the trustees meeting on Monday to assist with the town's request for the in-kind contribution for the uh, development of the Welcome Center and Trailhead. Um, so I'm already at that meeting. I can request from Meredith and the trustees a modification to the agenda to add a discussion item regarding uh, the Old Mill Park building so we can you know, kind of have that discussion, hopefully on Monday. Um, and probably following the trustee meeting and how that goes Tuesday, you'd want to be checking in with Rebecca and see if we can, you can get some guidance on. Uh, if she tells you one's a dead on arrival, don't even bother submitting it, then you wouldn't you know, obviously put that one in and see where the others can go. Yeah. Okay, uh, is the board at a place of comfort in, in what we've uh, laid out for Brian to go forward? I'm sure he'll be 
sending out emails, updating the board, how that's progressing. I um, go ahead. I Isaac. think, I guess what I was going to say earlier is definitely move forward with submitting the light industrial park. And if we could get a cost per square foot for putting a, the shell of a building up, add that in there or submit another proposal that's the light industrial park plus that building. Yep. And that way, you know, at least the, the light industrial park is going to get submitted. If we can get that extra building in there um, and get the money for it, it'd be good to get it. Yep. And I think I, everybody would agree if it comes down to uh, Tuesday or whenever Brian has a discussion with Rebecca and some of these projects are just not going to even fly, but others would be very, very competitive. We would want any that will be competitive to go forward um, to hopefully bring some money into Johnson. Johnson has been very, very successful over the last few decades, uh, bringing a lot of money in. And like I said, pork tastes pretty good when it's on your own plate. Okay, Brian. So we're clear on the three projects I'm gonna be pursuing. And the industrial park, the first one is, is definitely being submitted. Uh, and then the following two we'll be working on to try and, and uh, have something worthy of submission before the deadline. Yep. And the following two are buildings at Old Mill Park and Old Mill Park rec build out? Yes. Okay. All right. I, I see a consensus of the board. Is there any other business for the board? tonight. Oh, Scott's got something. The wisdom of a trustee board member. There you go, Scott. Yeah, almost past village trustee. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> um, so for reaching out to people, especially with the old um, buildings down at that area, please, please, please get a hold of Meredith. She has costs. She's done her homework. She has a very good idea what a new building would cost, how much it would cost to repair. Those figures we already have. Um, so it's not a hard reach. You just got to email her and ask yep. um, and she'll fill you in. And I just want to make sure that people know that the moldy building, um, it has to be dealt with right away. So it's not like we can just say, oh, whatever, you know, we'll wait for Old Mill Park to get moved over to the industrial park. We can't wait. We have a moldy building that has to be taken care of this summer. So we're on a really strict timeline um, to make that happen. We, don't, we just don't have that luxury to, you know, wait for the new building up on the hill. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Eric, do you want to mention the seven o'clock bells? Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, the governor has ordered today flags to be flown at half staff and for bells to ring at 7 p.m. in remembrance of this being the one year anniversary of the first death of uh, COVID uh, in Vermont. So uh, not, not a happy moment, but it uh, our town, we will be ringing the, uh, the clock bells at 7 p.m. for one minute. So you don't hear them ring very often if you're nearby or, or outside. Uh, it should be nice to hear them anyways. Uh, but uh, it is one year anniversary of the first death in Vermont from COVID-19. And hopefully uh, if you heard the governor's news conference today, they're opening it up to, uh, boy, but I think around April 19th or something in that range, 25th, everyone over 16 years of age will be eligible to get a shot. Um, he's certainly hoping that by July 4th, uh, we will have majority of any Vermonters that want uh, the COVID-19 vaccination will be able to have it. So uh, 
hopefully we're able to move towards a more normal time. Doug, you had something else? But yes, it's seven o'clock tonight. The bells will ring at the town clock. Yeah, I wanted to point out that the there's ambiguity. We have the village garage, but it's actually town and village owned property. And uh, it's certainly a, a serious problem. Um, the I think that uh, any money spent on those buildings on that is throwing good money after bad. And so certainly solutions need to be sought, but you need to, the boards need to take a careful look at, uh, at what, whether you're making progress or you're, you're just throwing a, an anchor overboard. Um, I guess with regard to broadband, uh, uh, we would like, or I would like you to remember the LFCUD when it comes down to allocating money from the uh, American Rescue Plan. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, okay. Anybody had anything else? If not, thank you all for joining in. Are you waving by or are you raising your hand to speak? <laughs> Okay, you're waving goodbye. All right.